all right so previously I left you over because you know I was trying to like keep the videos shorter than 10 minutes but it was going with above that so I had to cut that video off but I will try to like make this video a complete one anyways I left you over to uh, before creation of the new project so if uh, you head over here you can see this new by my new button well if this is your first time visiting uh, this page you will find a, a very big form telling you steps that you can use to like create a new project but um, like me if you have project set up then it won't prompt to do that but will give you a link that you can use to create a new project so anyways we'll just head over and create our new project let's give it a name Mm, I don't know sample project mm, that's enough description mm, nothing special okay so like I already told you that these are a few of the concepts that uh, primarily software engineers use to develop their projects it has um, features like how much time will you spend on each feature or each like um, each pro uh, uh, each project so uh, to learn more about them you can either read the documentation or get a good software engineering course we'll go with the defaults but i want to change this one because we are going to get an overview of team services git would perfectly work but I want to like give you an overview of team foundation version control so we'll check that one and then finally we'll create the project it will go ahead with the process it keeps our own services like for example the process template agile project name sample project it's creating the project and okay let's navigate to the project as a simple website each of our project is uh, assigned a special directory under our teams directory like for example this one yeah okay congratulations thank you so, so this is the default home page for this project not your account or your team like for example I had this one it had a separate account I have this project it has separate account because it it is going to have separate codes it is going to have separate work items separate build definitions separate tests going on etc etc and it is also going to have a separate introduction so that is why it has a separate home page assigned to it these are kind of small widgets that are a new feature around here so and i will walk you through like most common works uh, common ones of them like for example adding code to your repository continuous integration etc i will mm, leave this one and this one for a further one because they are not as much important this one is important this was in isn't so i will like add a separate module over to there okay so uh, the main part is done now your project is complete your project has been created so what you are going to do is you're going to open up open this up in Visual Studio I already have that set up and if you see like for example if you see I already have the team Explorer open here but I don't want the default settings so I will start over let's close this um, open in Visual Studio yes I want to do that oh isn't that a bit of irony I asked you to download Visual Studio community but I'm using Visual Studio Enterprise <laughs> funny well man, there is no absolute difference in both of them okay so when you start initially uh, you're asked to configure your workspace that's a very good thing so basically you just simply click on that and you map and get it will configure a default a directory for your project and uh, the look and the location where it is going to be found 
when like for example when you have to like get the by uh, get the source code out or uh, out or when you're going to copy paste any of the project or solution folders etc whatever the choice might be so we'll just click on map and get it will work around a few things we'll let it work okay the workspace was mapped successfully thank you mm, yeah okay so now let's head over to here as you can see our project was sample project and if you return back over here you will see that now the team explorer reflects our sample project previously it was hello tfs but now it uses sample project if you click over here you will see most of the things like banding changes source control builds etc so these are the settings for your sample project project that was in italics <laughs> okay so uh, this part is done now uh, let's head uh, let's head back over here and these are a few of the things that i want to go through the works and pending changes we are not going to walk through that neither are we going to walk through this one these two are the important things source control explorer if you head over here and um, you see this you should find that this is basically um, this is uh, this is the source control for this project it can contain multiple other uh, multiple other folders etc multiple other projects solutions that you want to define under a sample project so there are two ways of doing that uh, doing this uh, either you can like for example drag and drop your solutions over here or you can like go ahead and create a new project and then assign that project to this solution control okay so basically what i'm going to do is create a new project to walk you through each and every single thing around here with okay so create a new console application project to upload that seems fair create it give visual studio some time oh it was fast this time okay now uh oops uh, okay so okay this was not meant to be open fair enough I don't know why there are so many errors this time okay so uh, this is the project source control explorer and so there is nothing uh, right about it there let's head over to the source control solution and you will find this uh, this option add solution to source control click over it yeah, I want, I want to use the default settings. You can always update these, like for example, change the name, create extra folders right over here, do all sort of stuff. But I, I really recommend that you use these default settings because if you don't use these uh, settings, uh, once you go to your build process, etc., and you want to go uh, to download the files that's, or do anything else, it becomes really very confusing. So I don't recommend doing or making any change so use this click ok so it's done as you see these add and if you have ever used any source control you will know what uh, what all of this means so now previously there was no this option so this time what we can do is we can use these options to make changes and like for example upload the changes that were made over here to the server and do all sort of things so if you like for example check in you select the sample project like I did not check this one I was publishing it to another and so there was an error so <clears throat> 
Okay, so it simply just checked it out using the same message that I used a, uh, a while ago. Okay, so if this has been checked, so where where is it? Then, if you head over back over to here, you click on the files or simply just refresh it, you will find that all of your stuff has now been uploaded over to here we don't uh, need to go around in the build templates there for example XAML templates forget about them build project to upload project uh, no sorry um, this one this is the solution file every single thing that like for example you had over there had been uh, moved up head over to here and you can see that same things are available right under this one so for example if you go over here and you see that for example if if you cannot access this at the moment you can do the same right here too for example if there's any pending change it will show it here if there is latest it will show that right over here checked in etc everything and right over here you can see this is the main this is the main directory where you, uh, where you created the projects under visual studio 2015 okay so i i just want to head over here at the moment The good thing about uh, this uh, website is that it also allows you to edit your programs. So, for example, if you uh, click over edit and you do it, it will let you edit your programs in this browser too. But I don't want to do that because it would be too simple. So, on the other hand, let's go back over here and make some changes to this program. In this console dot right line. Sorry, my hand is broken and I cannot type. That is why I'm using as much shortcuts as I can. Now, if you look around over here, you will see that this file needed needs to be published so we can just for example go over here and check it uh, so uh, what to write in here updated program file would that suffice oh no no <laughs> would that suffice was a question not this one so check in again an interruption I hate this personally saying change at 31 uh, successfully checked in head over to home I always do that okay so now if we go back over here you will see that the recent change that we had made in the file is available on the on the cloud too so for example if you, so your team can download the latest version to their machines and work with that one we can also do it right from here so if you're just trying to uh, locate so we can do this right over here it will add the message that we want and finally check it but I don't want to do that from here yes I want to do that this was basic programming uh, programming section that I wanted to and I will dive into this one a bit later but first let's head over to build and release and I'm personally thinking that we should really keep this simple so basically the build definitions are 
uh, or the definitions are the are the list of tasks that your project needs to undergo before it can compile and generate some binaries so for example all of the IDEs have a build definition it has the tasks that it needs to undergo before it generates the uh, the executable obviously all of the process is hidden under that green button in Visual Studio or in the green button Android Studio etc but all of them have this thing in common that they have they are like a list of tasks that that the pro that the that the project or the application has to undergo so to create a new definition you just have to go around to this or you can do the same from that any anyone any single one would work let it load since our project is visual studio based we will select this one this is the default one but on the other hand you can like for example build your android applications build your apache and asp.net build gradle etc the good thing is that the gradle and android are separated gradle is basically a java build system if you are a java developer you will understand that java, gradle is a java build system implemented for android so don't confuse yourself uh, with like for example if you see the gradle icon in the android studio that doesn't mean that uh, that this build will work perfectly for you you should use the android uh, version of this one windows universal windows platform like for example for windows 10 xamarin and and if for example you're using a custom build environment for example if you're building a native c or c plus plus application and none of the above provided ones work for you you can always select this one and write your own modules that you want to execute so we'll stick with visual studio click next sample project because our like for example our our source code that we want to use comes from this project we want to select this if your code comes from like for example github or other like, local git repository remote and local they're kind of same you can use them and like provide their properties etc we're going to have this one and then finally I'm going to walk you around with this one a bit later leave the defaults leave the defaults and create Wow wonderful so all of you all of you might or why am I saying my all of you do know what nougat restore is what the build solution is what test are what the symbols are for example and each of this is the step that visual studio basically goes through while you click on this this start process so for example it goes through obviously it does not restore the nougat packages because you already have them so uh, however these these both build systems are, uh, have this thing in common so if you uh, and as a matter of fact if you have to add a build step like I said if you have a C or C++ project you can add a, oh see see so for example if, uh, like I said C or C++ project so you can use a CMake this is a very popular uh, build system for C++ and C etc or even anything on Linux you can use that MS build and other uh, uh, settings you can use utilities like for example if you want to archive the files you can use this if you want to run the batch script you can use this you can extract the files use PowerShell FTP upload these are all of the services that you can use to like publish your project so for example if uh, if your client needs you to uh, like for example upload the executables to their server you can like for example first use this archive files utility to archive all of the executables because most of the servers don't allow uh, native or bare executables to be published or sent over to them and then you can use FTP upload simple you can use all of these and just like for example drag and drop them if I use this close it does not have this so don't mind it so 
I and I can even arrange it in the order that I want it to be. So this is this entirely this uh, this list is the build process that will be executed when I start a new build. Pretty simple. Let's delete this one. Save. Let's give this name. How about I say sample build definition comment nothing to say I'm not sure why I'm saying nothing to say when there is nothing to say okay so at the moment we are done the build definition has been created our code has been uploaded where it has to be so now what we need to do and go ahead is to queue a new build you see in visual studio you have this with this button you can queue a new build from here okay but in team services you, you need to manually go and queue a new build so for example uh, yes i wanted to, to show you the code the solution is here the folders are set up everything is set up we didn't change anything because it would be more confusing for you than to me so I tried my best to keep everything as much short and simple as possible so would you know what this code is going to do obviously the hello world project okay now let's go ahead and queue new build Did it work yeah queue hosted and default okay so if like for example you want to use team services only you want to keep this to hosted if you want to use your own personal or custom servers to perform the build you you will use default but you don't want to use this at all if you have to so keep it to hosted source version and leave all of these as they are system.debug configured these are the uh, variables so for example this is going to build the executables for release not the debug build platform any cpu etc you can change it to like for example 32 or it uh, sorry 64 or 86 etc but i leave everything to the default all right now the wait now the wait part comes this really requires a lot of waiting because as you had seen that the build process is basically a list of tasks to do and the build process basically once it has connected to the host uh, this the hosted agent uh, which you're seeing once it has connected it will go through all of those processes one by one we have connected it is initializing the connection to the agent and if everything is set up so for example if even if your solution file is not available it will fail so if it fails don't blame me but hopefully it will execute let's go over here no i did not want to come over here i wanted to come over here because i want to make another change and i want to show you one final thing before i terminate everything yes let that work what it is to be so even if it fails you know that there is just a bit of error in one of these steps hopefully it won't fail anyways get over here previously we created uh, we created the definition and now we want to modify uh, the build definition these are the options repository setting variables the same variables that you saw that we had created okay so uh, this is in progress keep this in mind too let's head over to general I know I skipped triggers general see uh, these are uh, the basic settings so for example uh, the build number format uh, as you can see 2016 11 25 dot one it's the date 
25th November 2016 and first build uh, that is happening so retention etc so how much time to keep it now come back to the triggers the triggers are basically uh, when you want to trigger the build so for example there is a concept of continuous integration if you have ever had a software engineering course you will understand what a continuous integration is this is a very uh, or you can say most wanted concept in like every uh, every organization or every team so for example if there is a build or like for example if there is a commit from a software developer you want to test whether that that uh, that commit will pass the build or will it make the build system to fail if it fails uh, during the build process you want to make sure that that this commit does not go into the production code because it will cause a lot of uh, a lot of confusion and a lot of anger in your customers so this feature uh, provides you with the same what uh, what uh, this enables you to do is like for example continuous integration it allows you to start the build process each time there is a change so for example if you like um, change your code and you check in the build process will automatically trigger itself and will start to build and check if uh, if your recent changes were successful or did they cause the project to fail and like have issues so we'll save that sample build definition uh, yeah that's the name how about we just go back over here it shows in progress over here but here it is showing build success oh well voila <laughs> the build uh, is successful so if you can see initi it initialized agent it got the sources the sources are basically the project files uh, it ran for 12 seconds near about wow this is amazing the build actually completed 2.9 minutes ago and i was expecting this to go from in progress to successful or uh, whatever that is uh, that had to show anyways we'll just uh, go ahead and do this Build definitions. We'll just have a look at it again. So, as you can see, each and every single process of this has the output. It has the logs. It has for example the build the build process. You already know what this is. Build succeeded. Zero warnings. Zero errors. Time elapsed. How much time did it take? And each and every single. Then it publishes that copies the files to artifacts and I will show you where to find your executables because if you go over here you won't find that I will go back to that later okay so it is passing as as you can see over here you can queue a new build if you want a custom build right over here the build succeeded four, uh, four minutes ago going back to the edit for just a quick checkup triggers ci is clicked build perfect now that you've seen everything is working let's head over and try to like for example now modify the uh, modify the code add something like a bit of console to read that will work Excellent work. Is it? I don't know. Same tick. 
right over here check in update it if you want more done yes I want to do that checking in one item change the 32 successfully checked in okay let's go back over here so let's go back into this and um, this is the build set <coughs> sorry wonderful so you see we did not need to queue a new build at all all we had to do was head over to sorry I closed that so all we had to do was head over to this one the settings page and we just had to click this one the continuous integration the continuous integration basically saw that our uh, this program file was changed and so it basically it started a new build okay the same process will undergo again it will connect it will get the sources it will restore the new get it will build the solution publish symbols etc it will do each and everything once again but the difference was that we did not need to queue a new build it did that all all by itself for us because we had this setting selected so basically this is also going to succeed is it I don't know project files let's close that one up time to wrap things up okay so build was uh, successful sample build definition head over to there and so you see that this this is basically an overview of what you can do so initially we went through the overview of team services itself and then we went over to know how to create the projects how to start the projects how to like for example push this sample project and this team repository into visual studio we went through all of that and then we went to see how we can update the source control how we can create a project and add that project to this one uh, keeping this one in, <laughs> in mind do keep this in mind because if uh, if this is not the same that you want it to be it is always going to cause you problem uh, previously I had some issues in my videos because uh, the problem was that I was selecting hello TFS and I was not selecting sample project so as soon as soon as I did that the problems started to fade away so and then we learned how we can edit the source code over here and how we can create build definitions how we can like for example uh, just a moment like how we can create the build definitions how we can trigger the build definitions or how we can set the system to automatically start the build process how we can like for example manually trigger them or how we can allow the system to automatically trigger them each time there is a change in the project so if uh, last time if you remember last time this was 5 out of 240 this time it is 7 out of 240 so each time you build the project it is going to consume the resources so that is why I personally recommend not to check that one but if for example you are working with multiple uh, multiple team uh, multiple teams or at least multiple programmers you want to have that one checked so that you know who broke the build so thank you for watching and maybe I will find you in a couple of next videos soon